Hey guys, Adam with Indie Farm Life here again. Today, I'm going to be working on the backhoe a little bit. So, last week I was out here trying to clear up some of all of this nasty mud. And I was running the backhoe for about 10 or 15 minutes and just started smoking a little bit from under the hood. And turns out it was radiator. So after some troubleshooting, we realized that we think the thermostat has gone bad. Radiator itself was still full of fluid. It was pumping fluid. So... $30 part from the case store. Hopefully that's the fix. Not too difficult. Have the manual, so got to pull the alternator and really plug and play after that. Put it all back together. Isn't it crazy that a $30 part can stop a machine like that? Hopefully I can get her going again because as you can see it's a bit of a mess out here and I've got quite a bit to clean up on this new property here. But it's all fun, right? It's an adventure. All right, so got the hood popped. Popped. I hardly call that a pop, but anyway. Um, basically, I just need to loosen up the tensioner here, take the fan belt off, pull the alternator, and then it sits just behind that, unbolt it, put a new one on, and put it all back together. So I should be done in probably six, seven minutes, right? Highly doubtful. Quick update here. Sorry I'm not live shooting this as I do it. I only have two hands, unfortunately. So I just took my hand, you're supposed to use a tool, and pressed in the, um, the tensioner here to release the fan belt. It was literally, I think, one bolt then, one bolt to pop the alternator off. Then I had to take the three bolts to take the bracket that held the alternator, and then couple more bolts to pull this entire housing here off of the engine block and the thermostat sits just inside of this block here there you can see it sticking out so I uh, just put a bucket down below because I had fluid going everywhere I'll pull this hose off here take this housing off put the new thermostat in and literally pop it back together it's like six bolts so not too bad quick interjection I would argue that I'm the absolute worst when it comes to looking at a bolt and saying, I know what size that is. Grabbing a socket, trying to put it on there, it's wrong, do it two or three times. I am just terrible at that. Can anyone else relate? Believe it or not, the most difficult part of this entire thing so far was getting the housing off of this hose. You can see it's been heated up a little bit. So I had to spray a little WD-40 up and around the lip and kind of work it back. But I'm gonna take some steel wool here and just kind of clean up that housing but uh, once I do that, I just gotta put it all back together and I'll walk over here and show you guys what I took out. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful day in January. Doesn't happen often. So, I killed the light there. So there is the housing that holds the thermostat. Thermostat pops out. You can see just how nasty, well, you can see. And I wondered if that was the issue. Yeah, so clean him up, put the new one back in, which is sitting there, and then put it all back together. Thankfully, we're in the home stretch. The one thing you will find in the instructions is this little template here. This is just to verify, can't really see what it says in the front of there, but to verify you have clearance in order to line everything up with the new housing. So I don't know if I can get the camera in here or not, but what you do is you put this template up against the housing where the thermostat sits, if this housing has a diameter more narrow than this template, then you gotta shave some off of this in order to make everything work. But thankfully, I'm not in that boat. So I took some steel wool and air compressor to the housing and cleaned it up as best I could. Now I just gotta drop the thermostat back in. Uh, one thing to note is there's these little, what they call them toggle pins, the top and bottom. They're supposed to be lined at 12 and 6. So it literally just sets down in there, drop the seal in, and then we gotta bolt everything up. Alright, so I just put the engine lift bracket on, followed by the housing that holds the thermostat. There's three bolts. Now I gotta put the bracket that holds the alternator, the alternator, hook the fan belt back up, and we can give her a start. Well, and, you know, tighten that hose. So we're all buttoned up, 
everything's ready to roll. However, I'm a little low on fluid, so I'm gonna run over to Chris's barn. I know he's over there doing something with firewood, I believe, today. Put a little more fluid in it. And also maybe grab his, I'm gonna call it a heat gun, but you know what I mean, to check infrared heat. Because the temp gauge in this thing doesn't work. This thing's just a project. As you can see there, you got a hydraulic cylinder leaking down, but we'll jump on big green and run over to the other barn real quick and see if we can't run down some fluid in that gauge. I couldn't find fluid, <clears throat> just add a little water for now, but gonna give her a start. Monitor the temperatures, see how she goes. Oh, wet seat. Now nobody out there come steal my key. Make sure we're in neutral here. I don't know if my water temp gauge works or not, but we're going to find out. So we're working up temp here still. A little over 200 on the exhaust. I don't think we got the thermostat quite open yet. Yeah, 46. It'll be a while. So I started working the machine a little bit because I couldn't quite get it to temp just at idle. Started rooting through this pile of garbage really but uh, I think the fix worked so I'll have Nick shoot the gun on this shoot the gun up top pull off significantly it did pull off significantly 88 what's the bottom it's almost equal now almost equal what's the right by the thermostat 165, yeah, we're below, it's probably close. That's it, it's fixed. We ran the machine for about 10 minutes or so. Got the temp above the 190 to open up the thermostat. Seems to be working. After we got it back to idle, it closed back up, so it's not too, not super warm today, but I would say uh, that's a that's a fix. If you guys have any questions, leave, leave in the comments section. Be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, subscribe. There'll be more videos coming, many about this case. John Deere tractors, you name it. They're on the way. Happy to review products and let you guys know what works for us and what does not. Take care.